and right, which we're going to show off um, a little bit later on. But first of all, Joelle and Sarah are joining me from Drop Beer Brewing Company or Beer Company. How are you doing, guys? You okay? Hey guys, yeah. I'm Joelle. I'm Sarah. And we're the co-founders of Drop Bear. And yeah, we're here today with Simon with our Tropical IPA. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, well, I, I normally kind of go straight in and ask a few questions later, just so to, just to wet the old whistle. So shall we open the beer? Yeah, I'll give Sarah the other Oh gosh, pressure. <laughs> here we go. Lovely, as I say, a broke on the bottle opening. I'm yeah. using a, a, a nice snifter glass. Is this the type of glass you would suggest? To yeah, broke? definitely. Yeah. It's got um, a really good aroma to it, so you want to sniff it. Oh, I will. I will. Let's get in. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful looking beer. Um, mm. Nice, nice head. Now, my first question, because um, you're brewers of non-alcoholic beers in, in Wales. Um, my first question is a bit of a technical question, and, and that is, and I've always wondered this, the, the beers are brewed with yeast, malt, and I mean, the hops and the, the, the water is, I mean, it's very important, but my... Um, thinking with this whole thing is 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 the beer ferments the the yeast ferments with the malt it yes. takes the sugars from the malt ferments it into alcohol then do you have some way then of sifting the alcohol out of the beer i know we've gone technical very early but it's just that i really oh. it's a question i've always asked myself no, it's a really good question. Um, I think as well, it's good to raise it now because it does highlight that, you know, this product is a real beer. Yeah. Um, and that's something we get asked, you know, at shows people like, okay, it's good, but is it real beer? And um, my answer is always yes. Um, there are different ways to produce alcohol-free beer. And some of them are ways in which I would say maybe that isn't real beer. But um, our process does follow the traditional brewing method very closely. Um, yeah. Let's have a uh, say. Yeah. Time. So essentially, our method, what we do is, um, so we um, lose use the the low fermentability wort method, um, and then some arrested fermentation as well. So you end up with we we try to get it to a lower gravity than you would see. Um, so there's less sugar in the beer that you would see in a, in a traditional normal alcoholic beer. So yeah. there's less for the yeast to consume to turn into alcohol um, and then we just monitor it carefully while it's fermenting as well to make sure that it doesn't tip over that 0.5 um, mm. ABV. Yeah but we don't use any of the weird um, unusual yeasts. Um, some of them are great but a lot of them can leave a lot of sugar in the beer. Oh, um, yeah. that, you know a lot of alcohol free beers do tend to be quite overly sweet yeah. um, so that's something we've actively tried to avoid. Um, and as you can taste, you know, it's not overly sweet. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. like you yeah. need now into the yeah, aroma. I mean, if you put a blindfold on me and just, just handed me this glass of beer, at this stage with the aroma, I wouldn't be able to tell it was non-alcoholic. And I suppose that's the hops that you've added to the beer to really flavour it up, yeah? Yeah, we've got a lot of really strong, punchy New World hops in there. So as you can see, you know, you get a lot of really nice, strong tropical aromas. Um, yeah. To America. Um, yeah, it is a really highly hopped beer, <clears throat> given that it is an IPA. We didn't want to shy away from that, um, but you do have to be careful, I think, with low alcohol as well. You don't overdo it. Because right. then it can be, like, way too bitter. But, hops um, too. Different, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it smells. It smells beautiful. Shall we? Mm. Um, shall we have a little dive in? Shall we have a little sip? Yeah, yeah. cheers. Mm. Cheers, everyone. No, too. So Sarah and I are <clears throat> we're actually um, fiancés and we live together, so it's okay for us to share this in case anyone's worried yeah. about coronavirus. <laughs> um, we're safe. Oh, fantastic. Share it away. Share it away. That is fantastic, and I'm going to use my punchline. Mm. Stone the Crows. Stone <laughs> the Crows. What a fantastic beer this is. 
And I can, I know, you know, after after drinking this, if I get a big package and want to jump in the car for some food, there's no problem at all, is there? Exactly, not at all. So tell me, tell me, let, let's go back to the beginning then. Drop Bear Beer Company. I love your branding. Very Thank striking. You. Very lovely. Where are you based, first of all? And then where did the idea come from and when did you start? Yeah, okay. So um, we're based in Swansea. Um, we launched um, June 2019. So okay. we recently had our first birthday. Um, and I'll let Sarah explain to you a little bit about the branding and um, why we started because she's the Aussie and it's relevant. Yeah, so um, obviously we are we are in Swansea, we're a Welsh company, I'm very proud of that, but I am also from Australia, ah. um, so as you can probably tell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think that what we tried to do was Oh, very I've got nice. A box from Australia. I haven't had time to open. I got so much beer in my kitchen. I got this sent yesterday and it's come from uh, Victoria in Australia. There we are. That's, That's, where, from. From. That's where I picked her up. Very nice. <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah. I am. So, so basically, what we tried to do was create a, a brand identity that kind of encapsulated both of our identities. So a Welsh business with a bit of Australian branding, um, and it's a little bit of fun in uh, as well. The the drop bear. I'm not sure if you've heard of drop bears at all, Simon. Um, I, I'm, I'm always perfectly honest. Me, um, I I heard there was a big resurgence in in, in non alcoholic beer, and and I think that was because it was one. German beer brand that kind of dominated the whole scene for a very long time. Um, and then all of a sudden, I think 2018, 2019 was the real kind of pickup in non-alcoholic beer. But um, in all honesty, there are some beers in the box that I've been sent by um, Andy Evgar Cymru that I haven't tried before or heard of. And, and, and um, yeah, I'll be perfectly honest, this is the first time really trying your beer, but it's fantastic. Yeah, really nice. Thank you. Great. I'll let carry on the drop. Yeah, so essentially a drop bear is um is basically a koala, cousin of a koala, um, and is the kind of the rabid kind of uh version of a koala. So um basically what they do is uh, if you're ever in Australia and you don't have an Australian accent, if you're walking in the bush or in the outback, they might drop on you because they hear a foreign accent and they get concerned and scared mm. and they drop. Ooh. Not fair. Yes. Yeah, it's really scary. It is very scary. Ah, really? You can prevent it by putting Vegemite behind your ears. <laughs> just put here, they won't drop on you. Ah. Basically, it's, it's obviously not true. But oh, when you, I had, you, you, had, you had me there. <laughs> yeah, she had me. And that's kind of our inside joke. And I think it was a nice way for us to show um, that we're Welsh Australian. Um, um, rather than just chucking a kangaroo, yeah. um, it was a bit more quirky, we're a bit weird. Um, yeah. And also, you know, what you tend to see in craft beer, you do get these strong brands, you get these characters, um, something that really personifies the brand. And we felt that was lacking a little bit in the alcohol free space. You know, there were beers, but there wasn't this like strong, really exciting, quirky brand yet. So mm. we were like, okay, well, we're weird. Why don't we do it? Um, and yeah. Be, yeah, we've always loved craft beer. Um, Sarah stopped drinking for a, a couple of months. Um, and that's when really we tried alcohol free beers. Cause before that I was a bit like alcohol free beer. Why would you bother? Yeah. I don't get it. Um, yeah. Can I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, Hi. I see this more as a, a, a nice conversation rather than a kind of like, you know, too much of a formal kind of thing. But um, I I was pretty much up to this point, I was the same. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of just struggled to understand um, why. But you're kind of like, you're kind of convincing me already that, um, you know, this, this oh, beer is, you know, it has a place in the market. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. Is. It's like even you know, on a weeknight, maybe if you don't want to necessarily drink any alcohol, but you would like the taste of a beer or that mm. kind of social interaction of having a beer in your hand. It's yeah. there's you know times like that where I think it really does come into its own. Well, I do have like some. I we both actually do drink, um, but in moderation. So you know, we had um, a couple of beers the other night, but my last two were alcohol free because I'd work the next morning. 
and I didn't want to wake up because I'm awful. I'm the I have such a lightweight, like I just can't get up in the morning if I you know have a hangover. So the last two of the nights are alcohol free, and I'm fine the next day then. But I've still been able to continue having a couple of beers and enjoyed it. And as you can see, like with a beer like this that's highly hopped, it has a really strong flavour. It's um, you know you don't feel like you're missing out. Yeah, so, uh, it, that that's almost like a life hack, isn't it? You know, yeah. you, you you kind of you 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 get you you've had a, a couple of say stouts or IPAs, and you're right. You look at your watch, and it's, it's getting it's knocking on now. I I really must either make a cup of tea and a few biscuits, or, or crack on a non-alcoholic beer, and it continues yeah. your evening. It continues your flow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Can I say very quickly at this point? Uh, to the viewers who are watching, if you're interested in this chat and if you're interested to purchase these beers, it's still possible to order them, order them sorry, until mm -hmm. Sunday evening, tomorrow night. So if you like what you hear, wonderful people at Drop Beer Brewery, Sarah and Joel, and please order some of their beer. And you get some fantastic other beers in the box as well, which I'll show you later on. Definitely should. <laughs> and a big, yeah. a big thank you to Coine. Um, who have organised this whole thing? It, it, it's fantastic, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, moving on, moving on. Um, what are your plans for the future? Well, I guess by about seven pm next Wednesday, we're hoping for world domination, um, and then I don't know after that. What is there after that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like to be honest, we we're due to launch a new product. I'm not going to give too much away now because. Mm. Secret um, next month. Um, we are looking into cans. Um, we're looking into expanding the range. Um, we just actually got um, our first World Beer Award. Um, oh, so congratulations! The other yeah. day, must have been the other day. Yeah, it yeah. was literally a couple of days ago. So our Yuzu Pale Ale um, got bronze. Um, so we're chuffed with that because obviously it's our first time entering. Um, yeah. We're really new. We were um, one of only two UK brands as well to to win anything, so we we're really happy with that. Chin yeah. chin, that's cheers, an internet cheers. cheers. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so yeah, we we got stuff like that. I guess just um, we're starting to export now as well. So we we are now available in Canada, Spain, and we're due to launch in Australia. Fantastic. So, yeah, I think a bigger on trade presence, um, maybe a supermarket would be nice. Um, but yeah. you know, that's the process. Yeah. Um, and coronavirus is just making everything a bit manic. It's difficult, isn't it, at the moment? I think um, mm -hmm. it is difficult. Plus, plus for the, um, I, I find the competition in the supermarkets is just intense at the moment. The um, the amount of, I mean, Tesco, uh, Morrison's launched a range of beer just the other day. Now we've got Tesco launching a massive range again on Monday. Um, and for me, for me, we're trying to review all these beers. It's, it's literally, it's impossible. So, yeah, I think it's important for you to get a foothold in the, in the market. Um, is it a Welsh supermarket chain that you could approach? I'm trying to think of the name now of them. Um, they're from Bridgend, I think, the, the Welsh. Or, or Lanford Major, I think they're from. The uh Welsh I, I think I know what you're talking about. I can't remember. I think, to be honest, we were looking more national. Um, we have had quite a lot of interest. It's um, obviously what people don't see is behind the scenes, there's a lot of deadlines that the supermarkets have that yeah. maybe you don't know about when you approach them. So if you miss it, you've got to wait another 18 months. Um, tasting some of the beers. Yeah, but I think something good that has come out of coronavirus is maybe that people who only had access really or only thoughts to buy alcohol free in a supermarket now feel more empowered to go online and explore brands for themselves oh, yeah. um kind of putting that power pack back into consumers hands and yeah. i think from the producer as well um so we've now got a web shop so people can get it directly from us yeah um rather than through say amazon or, or the supermarket which is nice i like to talk to our customers as well yeah. and chatty if you can't tell Brilliant. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, that's the best way to sell your beer, I find, is is to actually be there speaking to them. Um, striking up a conversation and selling beer is, is just fantastic. Fantastic. So um, shall we um, 
Would you like to lead me through a little tasting of this beer while what, what we're drinking? It's got we just I'll start off with the way the beer looks. It's got fantastic lace on the glass. The head retention, as I've been drinking the beer all the way down, has been absolutely superb. If I roll the beer around in the glass, you can really see the quality of this beer. Carbonation, very nice. It looks to me like it's an unfiltered beer. Over to you. So, um, as you can, as you've mentioned, on the nose, you do get a lot of tropical fruits. So you get a bit of um, passion fruit, pineapple. I always pick up a bit of peach. It almost reminds me of those pretty filou yogurts sometimes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's just me and my crazy brain. Um, and it has quite a sweet, almost aroma. But when you taste it, it's a different story. Um, we deliberately uh, mixed up the malt bill a little bit with this because there are a lot of IPAs and New World Hop IPAs on the market and just generally in beer right now. So we wanted to do something different with the malts. So we've added in a bit of um, roasted barley and dark chocolate, um, yeah. chocolate malt. So you get a, a hint of smoke, mm. a bit of dryness. Um, yeah. It's just a bit more of an adult drink. Mm. But it's singing there as well. Yes. A little bit of kind of like that, a little bit of traditional British hop kind of stinging nettle. Do you get that in the aroma? Yeah, I do actually. There we go. Um, and yeah, you get some slight notes of toffee, caramel. They're all coming through from the caramel. A little bit of biscuit, but I do get um, a bit of coffee. I think the coffee and the chocolate from the malts are the most dominant feature in terms of the malt build there. So, yeah. it, you know, you've got something that's really complex so you could sit and chat about and really analyze it's not really boring and simple we got one from beth and asking is it just the two of you in the company um so we do have um another team member amy so we're actually an all-female team at the moment yeah. so full power <laughs> um and we are looking to expand um because you we've actually had phenomenal growth basically from our launch. Um, but luckily as well, during coronavirus, it's been such a hard time for everyone. And it was scary for us at such an early stage. You oh, know, yeah, yeah. Old. But uh, we've managed to have really strong growth. So um, yeah, three of us now and who knows next year, <laughs> probably more. Fantastic. Um, into, the, into the taste then, it's, it's, it's a very balanced beer. Yeah, I think so. More balanced than me, I'd say. <laughs> We got a nice level, as you mentioned, that kind of sweet malt to begin with, and then, mm -hmm. and then nice bitterness on the back end, just to kind of – I always do the, the hand glider, glider reference where you've got the sweetness and the bitterness, and it's just yeah. lovely and balanced, you know, uh, with the beer. I could, you know, I, I could drink quite a lot of this. Um, I, I was always um, – my struggle was, and this was only up until a few months ago, really, but I, I started drinking these beers. A lot of vice beers I've been drinking, the Paul and a mm. zero percent. And, yeah. and my, my, even some of the stouts, there's a couple of stouts out now you can buy in the, in the yeah, supermarket. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah, nip to your website and buy yours. Um, I'll give you a website out now if that's um, dropbeerbeers.com. Yeah. Are. Yep, yep, head over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try the box of Welsh beers, then please order them um, from Cohen at the same time. Um, yeah. yeah, it's lovely. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the head retention. I'm really, I'm the lacing on the glass. Really. Something that's really good as well is it's only 21 calories per bottle. So um, that's actually insane, really, calorie wise. Like you could have four of them and it's about. The average banana calorie wise and it's oh, like really? i'm not going to tell anyone how to live their life but if you offered me one banana or four beers i'd take the beers any day <laughs> brilliant yeah you hopefully got the potassium as well in here to go with it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're also all of our range is um vegan and gluten-free so um that's good as well because you can see with quite a few um low alcohol beers that they put lactose in um, and obviously that, that makes it not vegan and it increases the calories and <clears> we don't think it's necessary, so we don't put it in. But I think it's got made accessible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so by putting, um, just for our viewers, um, by putting lactose in the beer, um, you are adding body to the beer, yeah? So yeah. you're making the beer a little bit more creamy, a little bit more 
of a, of a mouthfeel, and that's to overcome that zero point five percent ABV. So how do you how do you get around that, guys? How do you how do you um how do you get the body if if we don't put lactose in? Yeah, well, we use um well we have a couple of little tricks. I, I say yeah. tricks, but nothing odd. Um, we fiddle around in the brewery with um temperatures and um some technical things like that. But um, we also use wheat and um oats, oats as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you wouldn't drink this and think, oh, it's watery. Um, yeah, especially no. for like lighter beers, I think you know it. it doesn't it shouldn't be necessary i don't think yeah. hmm. fabulous. So. fabulous yeah and um i I'm, I'm yeah i'm really enjoying it i really enjoyed it so how many other beers do you have in your range yeah we've got two other beers at the moment um so we have a yuzu pale ale um mm. which the the yuzu fruit in it from japan um so we've got with the malt you get like caramel and toffee and then the yuzu adds the the citrusy tart kind of flavor to it mm -hmm. um it's really uh, um, sorry to interrupt you the yuzu yeah. fruit is that that um real stinky fruit that when you break no. it you're thinking of a dorian. dorian ah right yeah yeah i wouldn't put that in anything <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one so. room into that beer, um, yeah. and then we've also got a, a bonfire stout, um, which, like its name suggests, is very smoky. So it's kind of like a mixture between uh, an Irish stout and a Reich beer. Um, so that one is uh, very popular as well. Yeah, lots of burnt caramel flavors in there as well. Yeah, which I love. Yeah. Well, we we got my um, good friend and fellow um, Welsh beer journalist Arthur Daly, who's joined. Um, he writes a column for the South Wales Echo um, every Saturday, and he he now works for a cidery, cider company, uh, not a cider, uh, a cider company um, in Herefordshire, and he's saying that this is the best non-alcoholic beer he's ever tried. There we go. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Arthur's quality, Arthur's like quality control is up here. So so for him to say that. Yeah, uh, he's probably just backing up what I'm saying. Really, it's, it's a lovely beer, a lovely beer. Thank I'd you. like to get that on a, a t-shirt, I think, or a tattoo, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get it, get it tattooed. Yeah, um, brilliant. Yeah, re really, really enjoying it. So, um, I'd like to try your stout, and I would try. I'd like to try your, your yuzu fruit beer. So, your stout obviously is going to be dark. If I was to pour your yuzu beer in the glass, would it be lighter mm. than this? Would it be? Yes, it's more. Than cool. mm. Yeah. So we've got our light, medium, dark, and the scout is black, midnight black. Yeah, and it's got a nice coffee um, foam to it. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I love that. Fantastic, fantastic. So your plans for the future, world domination. Um, are you are you missing the beer festivals from 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 twenty twenty? I'm a big lover of the festivals, and it's yeah. a real big hole in my life this year, to be honest. Yeah, well, just literally, I think it was probably about two weeks before lockdown. We were at Brew London, mm -hmm. and I had we had such a great time. Yeah, it was yeah. we unveiled a brand new bar, mm -hmm. which is awesome. We had these local um, graffiti artists do it up. We had some like neon lights. It looked absolutely amazing. Yeah, everyone was having the beer, um, which was surprising actually, because when we went to Brew London, I wasn't sure how the um, reception to an alcohol free beer would be. Mm -hmm. But actually, it was very popular very with people who wanted to kind of just, you know, they were drinking for like six hours. They wanted to take a break midway. Yeah. Or, or you know, they didn't want to hang over the next day, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so many different reasons that people were saying. Um, so we had a really great time. So I was looking forward to the others for the rest of the year. And yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, hopefully next year, I'll all be back to um, normal. Whatever that is. Anyway. Whatever that will be. Um, yeah, my last one was Ciber X up in Liverpool. Yeah. Really a week later, it just yeah. And so I suppose at this stage we could we can mention we're doing it. So we're doing an online. Um, well, you're all here. You're watching. But this is an online event this year. I hope hope to see you next year at um, the St Fagans Beer Festival, Beer and Food Festival where uh, we can have a non-alcoholic beer together. That'd be fantastic. What do you yeah, say? Yeah, it would be so great, yeah. Absolutely. I miss actually seeing people in real life. Yeah. Uh, and uh, coming up now is um, Sam from Avon Mel Meadery. Guys, oh, they've gone. Um, I was just going to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. If you're still watching, 
goodbye to Sarah and goodbye to Joel. Um, lovely, lovely to have them on. Fantastic. Now we're moving on to um, Sam. I was lucky enough. If some of you have seen the introduction video, the advert really for this whole online beer um, festival we're doing right now, um, we had a photographer come down to my bar and we we had a little taster to, just to just to pour some of the beers out just just to get them kind of um just to get the advert out really and i was sipping this beer and i was thinking this is fantastic this is one fabulous fabulous mead so i'm looking forward to welcoming welcoming sam now he's, he's going to be coming out in any moment now maybe if we click my fingers and maybe he'll turn up yeah oh, look at that Look at that! I kicked my finger. Here you are. Bit of delay, but yeah. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Um, Hello. How are you? I don't know how much of that you heard, um, yeah. but I was just saying that we did a little advert where we were we were pouring it in the bar. Uh, I was sipping this as part of the advert, and it was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mead. So I'm really excited to get into this. So before I introduce you, and before I um, get into a big chat with you, sure, can I get it open into a glass? Go for it. If you have one. Uh, I do. I must say, I've got um, an unlabeled kind of uh, uh, from the garage. <clears throat> Perfect. Perfect. So, hi, Sam. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, good. Look at this. So, Sam, um, introduce your meadery, introduce yourself. And um, yeah, let, let's talk about this 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 mead. Hi, I'm Sam. Um, I run I run Avon Mill Meadery, which is attached to Newquay Honey Farm. Um, it's kind of like a whole holistic thing where I keep bees and I make mead. We also sell honey, but yeah, we're here to talk about mead. But uh, yeah, so this is a uh, this is part of one of the ranges of mead that we do. Um, in the session is the session mead fantastic and, and we um we're, we're, did you just see mid wales yeah um kind of uh, near new key well, yeah. just halfway between cardigan and Aberystwyth. fantastic fantastic um now as you know i'm a, I'm a beer reviewer and, yeah. and every time i pour a mead out it kind of shocks me a little bit i'm like oh this looks yeah. very good <laughs> but um, talk, me, talk me through this mead. Right. So session session mead's a bit of a new one for us at Avon Mill. We've been doing wine strength mead for over twenty years now. But um, session mead is is a new discipline for us. Um, it is different. The balance is different. The quantity of honey in it is different. The alcohol is different. Obviously, um, the whole shebang is a different uh, discipline so um in there in your glass is literally honey and water wow and yeast wow. and that's it so the i, I take it yeast fermented mocked up all of the yeah all of the, yeah. the sugars from the honey and yeah. into alcohol now when i went to sing fagans or when i always go to sing fagans i always see meads knocking about there and I always wondered to myself, it always seems like, you know, the Museum of Wales, it's, it's an old, uh, you know, you, it's a distant world, if you like, from where we all are now. Um, and my question has always been, is mead older than beer or is beer older than mead? You always watch these, like, Viking programs, oh, all drinking yeah. mead. Um, I read somewhere that the Sahara Desert was started by the Egyptians ploughing it to make Beer. I'm not sure if this is true, but it was over harvested anyway. Um, beer is pretty old. Um, yeah. Beer is definitely old. There is archaeological evidence dating me to 6000 BC. Wow. Uh, they dug something up in China that dates it that far back. Um, now, the thing about mead is that because honey contains the yeasts required for fermentation, all you've got to do is add water. So let's imagine, as it were, that you've gathered some honey in a hunter-gathery kind of fashion and kept it in a container that doesn't leak. 
that's literally it. It rains, you leave it for a week, that'll turn into meat, it'll start fermenting it on its own. So if it, say for example, it rained into this container and then it was sunny for a week, it would it would quite possibly start fermenting. And in fact, one of the earliest forms of mead is um, known as tej, which is T-E-J, and it comes from Ethiopia. And they say that uh, because the bees are different in Africa, they have um, the African honeybee, which migrates. So it's not permanent in the same location all the time. And so it flies off and leaves some honey hanging in its hive, right? Which quite often is a hollowed out tree that is um, like a container, effectively. Yeah. And they yeah. say that um, native people knew to look in these containers for water during certain drier seasons. And if there was honey in there, it would turn into this right. stuff. Now, in that sense, mead will happen on its own. Um, and this is the interesting, I'm sorry, I'm blabbling on about this now, but oh, fantastic. The, the, the main thing that bees do to convert nectar into honey is to reduce the moisture content of it to less than 19%, because at that point, the sugar concentration in the honey is so uh, <coughs> intense that um, no yeasts will uh, become active, um, so it doesn't matter. And um, this is part of the bee's whole strategy of storing food, is to turn the fermentable nectar, which has a very high water content, into something stable, uh, which they managed to do with complete and awesome ease. Um, yeah. They found honey in Tutankhamun's tomb that was still recognizable as honey. I mean, it works, yeah? And wow. um, this is where mead comes into it, because Honey is a preservative, so you can store things in honey because of this concentrations of sugar. And if you ferment it, and it's quite easy to do this to over 15%, that will store things too. Right, okay, okay. And this is where mead comes into it. I mean, yeah, it's a nice drink, but all the disciplines of mead, from uh, the fruited ones and the spiced ones and all this and that, um, inevitably came from a practicality to start with. You know, like where beer brewing came from the uh, desire to drink something that wasn't um, dangerous in the medieval yeah. times or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of the disciplines of, of uh, mead will come from the desire to store things for winter, and specifically medicinal things like spices and herbs and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. In, uh, in Wales, there's a, a huge amount of synergy between... Um, like if you look at the language, right? So med is the same as medic, medugva, which is doctor, doctor surgery. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the links with uh, medicine and mead are, uh, go back a long way. So that's the history of it, yeah? This is how we get to this as a, as a drink. It's a um, bit like beer where, you know, back in the day where they, they would have found it, um, maybe some some barley bubbling away in a, in a, in a, in a Cool. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. You know that would have been. Or great. You know, the yeast yeah. is natural on the plant. Absolutely. It's already present. And literally, all you do is crush it up and add a bit of water. Yeah. It's it's inevitable that these things happen by accident, and we're like, oh, you know. Yeah. I mean, they say that uh, wasps get drunk on fermenting apples that have fallen yeah. down. You know, I mean, this stuff is yeah. happening in nature all around us. So. Uh, yeah. Largely, all we have to do is kind of make it into a process that can be repeated. Um, but this, this fruit fly is really enjoying the meal, <laughs> trying, to, trying to get to it. Shall we, um, shall we have a little, um, I mean, as a meat drinker, do, do you do the whole, let's look at it, let's get the aroma, do you get the taste? Or, or Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, you go on all levels. I mean, you know, uh, the aroma from honey is, 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 um, is worth working on. I uh, give you an idea of. Uh, I think the nose and taste are so linked on this. Yeah, yeah, massively. So it kind of follows. I, I get, I get a real kind of lovely, lovely. It almost really wants to. You know, you you smell and then you want to. It's giving you that urge to sip it mm. right away, which I think we should do. Go for it. Uh, Five percent ABV. Yeah. Oh, that is, that is, again, I, I drank this, it was, we did the session at 10 o'clock in the morning. 
And, <laughs> and, and, and I, um, I, I opened this. And I begrudgingly, I had to go out in the car after, so I drank half of it. Mm. And I realised I had to go for a little drive after, so I thought, right, I can't drink any more of this. I want to, but I begrudgingly poured it away. And, and that's one of the only times where I've been absolutely almost devastated when I've had to pour such a fantastic drink away. This is really, really good. Really, really good. I like it. Mm. It's, um, it's a tricky one, I find. I find... Um, um, Getting the balance on the lower alcohol ones, um, the point is is smaller. The, you, your leeway is less because there's less of everything. And you could dangerously slip into it being too watery, or you could also dangerously slip into it being too syrupy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. you can also, um, the balancing aspect is difficult because you've very little to balance. Yeah. So yeah. the only bitterness coming from that drink to counterbalance the sweetness mm. is from a low amount of alcohol and the carbon from the carbonation. Right, I see. Right, okay, okay. Because you do get a little sense of that bitterness, don't you? But it's yeah. massively drinkable. It's I mean, the you see the slow moving carbonation there. Look at that. Ah, it's beautiful. So so what would um you've mentioned it a couple of times now, which leads me into a question. Um, you say that it's five percent and it's a session mead. So what what would be the normal alcohol by volume, ABV of a mead then? Well, the wine strength stuff, we uh our entire wine strength range is thirteen percent. Right. Okay, so, so a lot bigger. So yes. Does it get, as the ABV goes up, does it get stickier? Does it get more refreshing? How does it work? Um, no, it doesn't have to at all. I Personally, I prefer the wine strength stuff at room temperature, so it's not in that kind of um, um, zingy, refreshing kind of zone. It's more wine-like in its application. Um, yeah. It's not necessarily sweet. I think mead has a bit of a rep for being overly sweet, and I think that comes from, you know, over the last 20, 30 years, say, me dwindled away to this sort of niche product where yeah. even some people were mixing honey in wine and calling it mead. And, and oh. you know, if you have any off flavors that you need to cover, you just put some more honey in and it became very sickly and mm -hmm. almost would burn your mouth if you tried it, you know, from too much sugar and all of that. We try and um, avoid all of these issues. Um, mead is... To my mind, uh, the oldest alcoholic drink known, as far as I can see, and there's a beautiful balance in there. But the thing with it is time. You need time, right? It's right. All about time. It's not about clever processes or intelligence or any of this stuff. It's actually all about making a well-balanced product and parking it for as many years as you can, like, oh, run it, yeah. and uh, and go from there. Uh, I think it's probably slightly different with the session range in terms of how many years you park it for, um, but it definitely improves um, with time. It is just um, oh. now there's so much historical context about ten year old mead. Yeah, now yeah. I don't know anyone with virtually ten year old anything unless they're insanely rich. But um, yeah, literally, I've the last week found some mead that I'd bottled and put under a thing and forgotten about for five years and it's an entirely different beast and it is stunning really you know so there's this aging on the back of my hand and just hold it to the camera <laughs> yeah. You can down the of this stuff. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean uh it's uh no i mean the the, the position of uh elizabeth the first has written that a 10 year old mead is a fine remedy for most uh, ailments i mean mm. Back in the day when they did a lot of mead, they were aging it for a long time. And and I think that's that's an important aspect of mead making. What's the fermentation for this? Is it one month? Probably done in about 15 days. 15 days, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. quick. Mm. Well, compared to a beer, I mean, a beer you can get out in a week, can't you? Three days, uh, four days. Over two weeks, I think, beer, yeah. And, and, and a really good beer, I'd say, about a month. Right. Just to get all of them residual sugars out. And, and we have a, a problem in our industry. If you rush a beer, um, you get something called diacetyl. Right. 
that, that comes through. Um, do you ever have that in the um, – sorry if I'm getting a little bit too quick, um, technical for our viewers, but I'll make that a very quick question. But do you suffer with the, the whole diacetyl issue with me making or – No. Um, so this is quite interesting. I'm not a beer brewer and I don't come from a brewing background. Mm. And so in the sense I read about, um, you know, brewing and I brew mead and um, – a lot of the problems that beer uh, has with off flavors and um, things happening in it, as far as I can see, don't tend to happen with mead. It's um, right. a very stable and kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's very stable. It's, it's great to work with. The biggest difference is that um, I think largely with beer, and I might be wrong about this, so please no one get insulted about this at all. Yeah. But um, I, as far as I understand, most of the work happens before you ferment it, and then when it comes off, it's pretty much done. Um, and with mead, the fermentation is the first step of many, and depending on what sort of mead you're making. So it's almost like a dry hopping process. Yeah, there's, um, there's, there's. I mean, on the session range, uh, it's quicker because, I mean, the sugars are complex within honey for a start. Yeah, and it's not simple sugars, not like. Um, white sugar or the sugars that you get out of boiling grain. I've made a, a, a mead called a braggart, which is a beer mead uh, hybrid. Yeah. And, uh, uh, a lot of just, Norwegian brewers make, make braggarts. I've had yeah, a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this stuff is Norwegian easy braggart. to brew. Yeah. It's like you put the stuff in, it's like ferments itself to zero like overnight or something. Yeah. You know, it's like a beer word is, is, is a nice thing to work with. Um, uh, honey must is, is not a good nutrient base for yeast so you have to uh, use nutrients but as with nutrients there's a whole thing like you've got to be careful with nutrients you've got to make sure that you don't put too many in or it's like you know stressing the yeast one way or the other so uh, there's a whole thing with nutrient and uh, nutrient addition but um, yeah it's a fascinating thing and it's great it's a great uh, product to work with because honey is variable um, from season to season, to bucket to bucket, depends on what bees have been going on. Um, and bees put enzymes in honey to prevent or inhibit fermentation. So it, having a repeatability to your process is virtually impossible. And I've spoken to a few mead makers, and you can make five barrels all at the same time with exactly the same method, and they'll come out with different figures at the end of it. And uh, right. I that's think. part of the game. That's this is what you need to work with. So rather than fight against it, go with it. And uh, yeah. So Stan, um, I'm just going to quickly say um, that um, you can order your mead and the rest of the box of, of this beer um, tomorrow night. Um, we'll have a link up now in the in the chat where where these this mead can be ordered. And I highly recommend the people who are tuned into this. Pardon me. <coughs> Please order this box of mead it is uh, uh, of beers and, and runs and mead it is absolutely fantastic um but can we can we talk about your 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 meadery then um yeah, the, sure, history, yeah. the history of your meadery um afon mel um tell us all about give us a plug uh, okay. the way it works is when i was nine a neighbor came over and said uh hey Shall I teach you to keep bees um, in return for some hard labor with my bees? And I was like, yeah, fine, whatever. Um, so I started keeping bees. Um, my dad got into keeping bees. We had a dairy farm at the time, and uh, he started some bees. And uh, to cut a long story short, because of the way farming was going and everything, they got out of farming, and they started the honey farm. I helped with some building work and then went traveling around the world and all that kind of stuff. And um, they, they, they did it. They built the meadery, they started making mead, they got the bees in and built the whole thing, and I just swam back in 2011 and kind of joined in. Um, I was keeping bees in other areas. I had some bees in London and down in Kent, and I uh, actually had bees on Shooter's Hill by Blackfeet, which was pretty cool. And, um, then uh, I just wanted to do commercial beekeeping. And I'll be honest, there was a small amount of resisting working for my parents going on, so... Uh, you know, kind of didn't do that for a little bit. But I came back in 2011 and in 2015 took over Soul Control. And uh, we bought the session range out since then. 
Um, the wine range that my father was making, we've kept on and I've added a couple to it. Um, we've exciting new meads coming out in the future. We've got a chocolate mead coming out and various other kind of like amazing things coming on. So, um, you know, watch this space with that. But it's having a bit of a resurgence at the minute. You know, it's um, people Can are I, interested. Sorry to interrupt you. This chocolate mead, is it going to taste like a crunchy bar? No. Ah, because that's like a honeycomb and chocolate, okay. isn't it? No. Like, ah, no, no, no. This is, like, this is like a chocolate liqueur with honey in it. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. it's, strong. It's, uh, it's almost it's almost liqueur strength so um yeah but it's not finished yet so uh we'll uh, there might be a few little things to work out but uh but no um that's it i mean we we've uh we uh what did we we won an award last year we're very happy with that um we were going to go for the maser cup this year but covid sorted that so i don't know what's happening with that the maser cup is the largest international mead makers uh competition right okay um, hosted in america but there's one uh mead madness cup in europe which we're going to go for and see what happens with that um and um yeah we'll see we'll see it's been an odd year as it has for everyone well um, that was leading me into my next question for you and, and that is how has this i call it on youtube because um <clears> when <throat> i make a video and if we talk about it too much in the live our videos can be taken down completely um i always call it the situation yeah. how, how, how has the situation um affected your um affected your business um well part of the honey farm has an exhibition with a shop and a tea room and every year we open our doors to um the tourist trade that kevin Dugan has an awful lot of and lockdown happened a week before that was supposed to happen so yeah. we you know started getting the whole place ready and this and that and then lockdown happened and we haven't been able to open this year uh really the exhibitions remain closed as has the tea room um largely the shop um we opened because people kept turning up anyway um but when yeah, we yeah. were released from lockdown it was nearly the end of the beekeeping season already so populating the exhibition and all that kind of stuff just didn't seem um well, fell on bees apart from anything else and uh so that that was a big impact but the flip side of it is uh we developed a new session product um to partner the one that we've tried tonight uh right. come out and been very successful i had a huge response for that um and really i mean two things one i mean you know i've got hundreds of hives of bees so i did a load of beekeeping and uh, yeah. i'm one of those people where being socially isolated was just a normal sense, uh, normal thing. I mean, beekeeping is a kind of isolatory kind of thing. People tend not to want to hang out with you. Um, yeah. You're covered yeah. In bees. Um, so yeah, it, you know, on one side it was a huge impact, and on, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we just carried on. I had a lot of bees to do, so I got on with it. Um, same, say exactly the same for myself. Really, um, it, it happened. It hit my first. I suppose panic moment was, oh my goodness me, um, what's going to happen to all the breweries? So I went mm. out and I bought a ridiculous amount of beer to keep yeah. the channel going over the short term. Yeah. And, and it just turned out that I got busier and busier and busier uh, and busier with, with the whole channel. So my, my life just carried on as, um, uh, mm. as normal. But, um, you know, of course, um, like yourself, I mean, you probably think about um, all of these poor people that um, that have been affected by it. But uh, mm. my life really didn't change that much. With uh, I just seem to get. Yeah, busy. I mean, I must say, business-wise, it's <laughs> taken. We've taken a hit, and mm. um, you know, there there is concerns about uh, next year. I mean, what's going to happen next year? Who knows? Nobody knows, do they? We don't know anything. So just make it up as we go along i think uh you know yeah, absolutely keep making mead i think that's the, the scene and then um the positive would be that maybe um this time next year um the festival will hopefully be at um some wagons again the national museum of wales and hopefully i can be standing next to you on a nice autumn night with a glass of your chocolate mead i think that's all you can do really isn't it? <laughs> it's the big positives um that, that's yeah. But you know, I think with a lot of people, you got to try and um, take 
what you can out of the situation. And we've done a lot of work with it online, and we've tried to reach out on a uh, on a broad basis, um, you know, to customers online. And we've developed um, that side of things. We send more parcels out now, and um, uh, I think that's been a positive. So there, you know, there's some positives to take from what has happened this year. And uh, you know, hopefully, you, you you could argue this makes us stronger and yeah. um, no more well developed and uh, more of a focus on the product. It's very interesting. Like you talk about shows, uh, we do uh, food fairs and um, other markets and Christmas markets, stuff like that. And it's always a, a, a fantastic opportunity to talk to people and give them your product and say, here, you know, drink that. Tell me what do you think. Give me feedback. All of that kind of stuff. You can look at what different demographics have different, uh, you know, all of this very interesting kind of feedback that you get. Um, and we've developed that slightly online. You know, we've, we've got uh, good feedback and good um, rapport with a you know, group of uh, people um, to help us develop drinks and we send them samples and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. um, it's, a, it's a very interesting way of working. And it doesn't take the paraphernalia and the whole effort of going to a show. So, the, you know, this is really quite interesting. I've, I've enjoyed that. Um, you know, we're doing stuff like this today. I never did stuff like this. I've never, you know, before before this year, before 2020, I didn't even do, you know, picture messaging or anything. So, uh, you know. And so, <laughs> um, uh, quickly, uh, if, if I if I could, uh, only, only because we've, uh, I think we're about to run out of time. My... my um, question would be would uh, what is your plans for the future um with the with, with the media i think you touched on it a little bit but um yeah well, what are your what are your plans for the future do you have a christmas meet coming out that people can order uh, well christmas meet i suppose this year will uh will be the chocolate one but in mm. terms of a long-term plan the meet that we try today is a session meet and we've not done session meets until we bought that one out and it was the first of uh, a proposed four. Uh, the second one has been released now. And uh, we want to concentrate on getting this, uh, what do you call it, a quintuplet of meads out there. I mean, uh, the next one will be a fruited one, and the last one will be a braggart. And mm -hmm. I've done tests of both of them, and they kick butt. They are really great drinks. I'm not... Um, not not making this up. I I'm very excited about these. Uh, I think the Braga is very interesting. I think you know because people are used to multi drinks, um, especially yeah. in a socialising context and stuff like that. This is a I hate using the term, but crossover product that will yeah. you know yeah. bring meads to a wider audience because it's kind of halfway to where they expect to be, um, whilst bringing some of the um, messages from the world of mead at the same time. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm excited about these. Uh, you know, we can't do everything all at the same time, which is a bit of a shame, but it's the, you know, we've done the testing and they're really great products. Uh, we're really excited about this. So, um, yeah, watch this space. Fantastic. Fantastic. Sam, it's been lovely having you on. I've really enjoyed our chat. I've, I've really enjoyed the mead as I did before. Um, I'm going to polish off this glass now and then I'm going to talk about the other, the other beers in the box. Um, but brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Le I really enjoyed having this conversation with you today. Um, I'd, love, I'd love to get in contact with you and, and maybe we can get a bottle of the chocolate mead uh, and review it on the channel. But yeah, all the best for the future. Cheers, Sam. Thank you very much yeah. for joining me. Thank you. Cheers. And then it was one. Okay, it's just me. Hello, everybody. So um, we got we got quite a few people of you uh, who have joined this this lovely feed. Um, would you like to now see? That was really interesting, by the way. I really enjoyed that. Um, two companies with with fantastic uh, futures, I think, going forward. And two, you know, one was a non-alcoholic beer company. Then we had a meadery. It just shows that Wales has so much to offer so much to offer in 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 in, in the, the beer the mead non-alcoholic the wine industry we got a fantastic um product range out there for everybody to try whether whether you like wine or beer or mead or yeah so should we should we all rum what about rum 
let me let me talk to you about some Barty spiced rum, shall I? Now I've never had um, any any kind of rum from Wales, and it looks like with an SA postcode they're based in Swansea. So there's a there's a glass of the rum. Next up, um, we have a can of craft beer. Now, now canned craft beer is a real focus point in brewing in Wales and all around the world at the moment. There's so much fantastic kind of artwork you can put on a on a can of beer. This is this is from Bragdi Tweetlol, and they're based in they're based local to me actually. Uh, they're, they're based in Treforest. Pontypridd, which is just a little way down the motorway from me, and this is their blueberry golden ale at four point six percent ABV. <coughs> Next up, we have a Bluestone Brewing Company Hammerstone IPA at four point five percent ABV. And where are we with this? Where are these lovely people from? Um, just just that they're made in Wales. There we oh there we are. Is that an address? That's the ingredients of the beer. So that's a Hammerstone IPA. That looks very nice. I love the, the, the artwork on that on that label. <coughs> I had the wonderful opportunity last year to meet the owner of Thomas and Ilford Brewery. Uh, we had a long conversation about I think we had a long conversation about fermentation and yeast. Um, this is a 4% ABV, 330 milliliter bottle of the Krugel. Next up, from Untapped. Now, I've had a lot of their beers, Untapped. They do some stouts. Um, their Golden Ale has won many of award in, in, in Wales at the Camera Great Welsh and Beer and cider festival they're based in raglan and monmouthshire in monmouthshire and this is their saison come on camera work for me maybe if i turn it no this is their saison now a saison is a french belgian style beer that was produced predominantly by the farm owner um, and he would he would give this kind of saison beer to his farm workers at lunchtime, um, just to give them a little bit of so they you know in, in medieval times they brew this saison style beer, and they would give it give it to the farm workers at lunchtime, and it would give them the the emphasis the 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 the, the woomph, if you like to to carry on a good afternoon's work. So you might have um, a chunk of bread, a chunk of cheese all produced at the farm and a saison that will be your lunch all produced at the farm and then you've got on with your afternoon's work um next up we have a beer from anglesey brew house and it's their ipa reese is asking what does the blueberry one taste like um it's a golden ale golden ale light and golden um and it's it's got a lovely lovely kind of blueberry taste i think we've got We'll, 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 maybe, maybe as Reese has asked for this, maybe we'll, we'll get the rest of this shown off now. Uh, yeah, this is the Anglesey Brewhouse Rossenegger Hoppy and, and a Golden Hoppy, and it's a 4.6% ABV beer in a 330ml bottle. Next up, we have the, we have a Kuru Lin Porth. Nigo IPA 5% ABV and these guys are based in Neflin Neffin Dewey Sands in Neffin in Wales. There we go. And then well we had, we had a second bottle of um this Hammerstone IPA sent to us. So lucky me, we got two bottles of that to drink. Another bottle of rum, which I'll enjoy. And this is a the last beer in the box is Bendy Gedfran, 
It's a 5% ABV Welsh Red IPA, and that sounds really, really good. I love the sound of a Welsh Red IPA. There you go. That's a nice look at it. And these guys are based in Carnarvon in Gwynedd. Fabulous, 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 fabulous. Right. Okay. So, uh, Reese is asking for me to crack open the blueberry. Golden ale with blueberries. Let's get it out into a glass and see what we get. Based in Treforest, as we mentioned. One finger white head, slightly hazy looking beer, good levels of carbonation, and it most definitely looks like a golden ale. Look at that. So I, I, I suppose um, half, of, half of me is thinking that maybe it would be blue because it's blueberry, but no, it's uh, of course, it's a golden ale. 4.6% ABV, so. First thing we do, and um, this is to anybody who is new to beer. The first thing we do with with a beer is we look at it. That's what we've done first. Uh, we we see it's got nice levels of carbonation, and you can see it's got a nice head, and you can see it's golden in the colour. And then the next thing you do, of course, uh, with a good beer, is to get the aroma. And that smells fantastic. Really, it's got a nice kind of stinging nettle, uh, traditional British hop aroma. A little bit sweet, and you definitely get a little bit of that blueberry. Shall we dive in? Let, let's, let's dive in and enjoy. Ruth? Ruth has got a lovely question asking, is it important to get the aroma uh, or, as she's put it, to smell the beer before you drink it? I think it's very important. It's very important, especially with the way beer is going in 2020. We'll say 2019, 2020s, where when I was learning the ropes about beer really about 10 years ago um brewers would insist that the beer was clear and i've been a bar manager in in, in some some bars in, in in wales and if the beer was poured out and it and it had a little bit of haze going on nine times out of ten the customer would return the pint but in this day and age and this is what leads you into the the, the smelling of the beer we always say now in the industry, you do not drink with your eyes. So you look at the beer, the beer might look like some kind of yogurt, like some kind of soup. It's really hazy, and they're called New England IPAs. This beer is unfiltered. You can see there's a slight haze in there, and it's very, very popular these days to have a hazy beer. So you don't drink with these. You drink with your nose and your mouth because you're getting the aroma on the beer and the smell and the taste. So things are moving forward very quickly in brewing all over the world, including, including Wales, where there's a lot of New England IPA brewing now in, in Wales. And that style comes from the New England region of America, where they started to produce really, really hazy beer. So things change. So yes, um, uh, to answer Ruth, uh, the, the, the biggest thing for me would be, yeah, absolutely. Aroma, smell it, and then taste it. Doesn't really matter these days what your beer looks like. It's all about the taste. So we've got a fantastic selection, really. Um, giving, you a, giving you a kind of a, a, a taste 
of the beer or, or to speak about the taste of the beer, it, there's a slight kind of sweetness to it, which, again, helps to balance off that bitterness in the beer. It's nicely carbonated. You can feel that carbonation pushing the beer around the inside of the mouth, releasing more of that flavour. And it's nice. There's a little bit of stinging nettle. You definitely get the blueberry. And it, it's, a, it's, it's a really, really good beer. Really, really good beer. And I think it might have been inspired by another um, one beer I've, I've put in the fridge and I've not shown you, which I probably should have done, is the elderflower ale called Isigawan. And it's a gold medal winning beer from the lovely people at Purple Moose Brewing Company. Purple Moose Brewery. And this beer is available year round and it's available in the box as well if you want to order this beer this is a fabulous beer one of one of wales's best kind of fruit infused beers i would say it's really terrific i i love the elderflower in this beer it's got a lovely balance the the elderflowers are really good in the beer, ah, oh, it's, it's yeah, it, it's one of the, it's one of my favourites from Wales. Is the Asagawin from Purple Moose um, Brewery. So maybe, maybe because um, th these guys over in Traforest have been brewing now for a, for a few years. Maybe they were inspired by the Asagawin and they decided to brew a, a blueberry golden ale, um, which would be very very similar in terms of the the taste. <coughs> beer wonder hello mate uh thought you was on youtube hello hello um beer wonder um beer wonder is a fellow um fellow youtube beer reviewer over there on um or on youtube fantastic thanks for joining us thanks for joining us i'm doing a welsh beer tasting interview uh evening tasting evening where we've we've interviewed the lovely people from drop beer brewing which is a zero a zero point five percent alcohol um, non-alcoholic brewery and then we went on to talk, talk to the lovely sam from afon mel meadery and this is their session mead and that was absolutely terrific absolutely terrific mm. So lots to see, lots to taste, lots to enjoy. Again, one more time, please, if you're watching, you can order the box of beer by having a look. It's halfway up the page. You can see the, the order case of the beer there. Um, and you get, yeah, you get a fair few beers, you get a fair few rums, a fair few meads, all from Wales, all throughout Wales. Um, what I like about this box of beer is that it's not... Um, specifically kind of coming from one area. It's coming from the far reaches of Wales. You know, some of these beers I, I've not ever heard of and I've not ever tried, and it's it's really nice for me to be able to to grab hold of something which is new to me. New to me, somebody who's drank over 6,500 beers on YouTube. I'm being kind of educated myself today in, in all of these wonderful beers from all over Wales. Some of them might be kind of farm shop like, like we were speaking about with the meadery. They sell a lot of their mead through the farm shop. So for somebody like myself, um, it's quite difficult for me to kind of get hold of that sort of stuff. And, and unless you kind of travel around Wales quite a lot. And same can be said for, for throughout the UK. Um, there's a lot of quirky breweries out there which, which are still to be found. Sometimes I feel like I'm digging for gold, you know, when you find these these wonderful breweries out there, wonderful meaderies. Mm. Well, I can't stop drinking. This is very nice. To the point where I'm going to move my stool out the way and, and just stand and, and have a moment with this beer. Even the dog sounds interested in it. So 
So, what can we have a little look at next? Um, shall we have a little look at some Barty Spiced Rum? 35% ABV, alcohol by volume. Uh, you can also hear this from the beginning. Ah, look at this. They've got the Angiev Gakumri YouTube channel. So if you hit the link, if you hit the link, you'll see this whole session live on the Angiev Gakumri YouTube channel. But I'm going to grab myself a little, a little, i tell you what we'll do. Do I have a... A small little, ah, what about this one? Let's try the spiced rum. So these guys are based, they're called Barty Rum dot Wales. Uh, that's the, the website. Here's to you, John Roberts. Cumro born, but bred at sea. Based in Swansea. They've got an SA postcode. <coughs> Pardon me. Shall we... Um... Mm. Look at this. Lovely colour. And this would be the first time I've, I've ever um, reviewed a, a rum before. So it's a, it's a golden colour. Let's get the aroma. Oh, I'm getting kind of brown sugar. Oh, and a really kind of punchy, spicy. Oh, that smells really nice. Like, uh, it's almost like um, a menthol with a little sweetness to it. And spices like you would get from a an Indian takeaway. Mm. It's first time for reviewing a rum. There's a first time for everything. Let's let's dive into this drink then. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's warming. Oh, that's really warming. Wow. Oh, that's um. Oh, that's a real kind of. You can see why rum was a very popular drink at sea when you've got the the sea air blasting in your face on the on the boat. Maybe when it's a a blustery day and it's freezing cold and you you get below deck and maybe grab hold of one of these spice rums and just warm yourself up from the inside up. I suppose. Ooh, lovely. I get cola cubes and cloves. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody's a little bit more experienced than me in terms of, yeah, cola cubes. Ooh, ooh that's, um, that's tingly, that's warming. Cola cubes and cloves. And that was my little reference to the, the Indian restaurant. I was, I was thinking of the spices, but yeah. You've nailed it down to to cloves, um, cloves, Bethan. But it's quarter to seven in the evening, so I've I've had a little taste of that. Maybe uh, maybe uh, we we won't get too excited with that. Otherwise, I'll be in bed by eight o'clock. <laughs> um, let's go back to the mead. I'm really enjoying the mead. <sighs> lovely lovely absolutely fantastic 
absolutely fantastic. Ah, this mead is, is very, very nice. Very, very nice. I'm having a, I'm having a whale of a time uh, uh, here. Um, I'm just enjoying myself here with, um, with, with, with you lovely people watching. Um, lots of different meads, lots of, lots of different beers. I'm absolutely in my element. I really am. Spend the whole night here. Mm. Let's go back to the. I mean, now we can go back and we can level off with that. Um, with that rum, we can level off with the non-alcoholic drop beer beer. Yeah, that's interesting. It's really very, very. It's really even against the, the 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 big kind of alcohol by volume of the rum, which is what do we say this was 37, 35 percent ABV. To give you an idea of just how flavoursome this drop beer brewing company beer is, it's zero percent ABV and it's wholly its own. You're getting a total kind of different variation of of, of flavours and. Spices and hoppiness and malts and yeah, really good. <clears throat> what kind of flavour do you get from the saison? Well, a saison is generally it, it's generally a it's a French Belgian style beer that's very yeast forward. So uh, the word saison um, is is actually a, a, a type of yeast. It's, it's a French slash Belgian style yeast. It's the saison yeast. So the flavors from the saison are really kind of coming from the yeast. A very carbonated beer, generally. Hmm, it's good stuff. Maybe, maybe you're interested to take a look. Is it cloudy? Right, I'm just going to wash my glass out. It would be cloudy, yes, it would be cloudy. I'm just going to check... Okay, so we're going to talk. I, I've, um, yeah, we've talked about. I'm just checking my um, schedule a little bit there. So we've talked about the other um, boxes in the beer, the other, the other beers in the box. Maybe we'll take a look at the Saison, which really doesn't want to. Ah, there we are. There's the label. It's a bit bright with my camera. Um, bottle opener, here we go. Beer, rinse the glass out. Here we are. And there's that carbonation I was talking to you about with this uh, yeast forward beer. Yeah, look at the head on that. Three finger white head, good levels of carbonation, 
and there it is, nice and golden in colour. And you can see whether my webcam picks it up. Yes, there you go. You can see that it's, you can maybe see the sediment there in the glass. The best thing to do is get the rest of the beer in the, in the glass. What we'll do, oh, it's, wow. This one's 7.4% ABV. Look at that. 7.4% ABV. Ah, and there's that kind of clovey, ever so slightly banana-y. Yes, but I want to get, I've got to get the whole beer in the glass just to show you how, how hazy this um, style of beer should be. Untapped, great brewery. This is a great brewery, some great beer. Banana, clove. It's very close to the Weizen style. This particular brew is quite, yeah, it's quite, quite like a, a, a German Weizen, which is, is banana and clove. Mm. It's very, very nice. Very, very nice. Let's see if we can get. Now you can see the haze coming through. There you go. So that's what a Saison should be looking like. Uh, a very unfiltered looking beer, um, a yeast forward flavoured beer. And you're going to get a lot more flavour. Now, now I've added the whole of the beer in the glass, you're going to get a lot more flavour from the beer. Because what tends to happen is the sediment makes its way to the bottom of the bottle. And then you get that that sediment makes its way into the beer, which we'll get a taste of now. Mm. Well, that's really good. That's really good. Okay. So I hope you all enjoyed your evening. That was one of the quickest hour and a half of, of, um, of my of the whole time I've ever been doing this type of thing on YouTube. I've had a fantastic time with everybody. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. Um, we've got through quite a few of these beers tonight. Um, leave your comments with Amgiev Gakumri in the chat if you've enjoyed this session. We have, thank you. Um, so, yeah, leave your comments. It's been wonderful. Hope to see you all again soon. I, I hope you've all had a lovely evening. Stone the crows and cheers.